Hello and welcome everybody to Alabama Care. I'm your host today, Antoine. And uh, today we're actually gonna be going over a special topic that hits home to me. And it's managing stress parenting special needs children. Now, today we'll be going over a lot of what I do in regards to managing that stress. Um, but I'm also gonna to touch on some topics and um, some resources that you guys will be able to reach out to or possibly give some ideas uh to how we can manage that stress um a lot of times when we deal with stress as parenting uh parenting special needs children uh we have to the problem of trying to get other people to understand by um differentiating the stress levels that it takes as a parent spe parenting special needs children versus non-special needs children but there's actually a really easy way that we can kind of relate to that if we just kind of shift our mind in regards to what's it like parenting a child without special needs. Uh, some of us out there know uh, we have some children that are special needs and some without, um, but there are, are others out there who don't have children with special needs. But we have to understand they have stressors too. Um, you know, me being a single father with um, both a special needs children and a non-special needs children, um, I get to see from a firsthand experience of what that's like. But honestly, those stressors really aren't too much more different. Yes, I do find myself in a different situation sometimes when it's more emergent and it requires more of a medical response. Uh, but the same stressors come with having my daughter and thinking about, okay, so I'm taking care of my daughter. Um, and she starts climbing on something, you know, a stress comes where I have to take care of that. I have to manage that. Um, you know, stress may come with when I'm working with my son, that when I'm working with him on his education or some of his cognitive learning, I'm not getting that same feedback response. Although those are two different types of stressors from two different perspectives, we can still relate. So when we think about other parents who have kids of non-special needs, one of the first thing that comes to my mind is when people say, how are you able to do that? How are you, you know, like, I, I don't, I couldn't imagine the stress that you go through, or I couldn't imagine the strength that you have to take care. Of. And I always try and remind them, um, you do know what that strength's like. You just don't know what my day-to-day -day routine is like, um, you know, and when going through these day-to-day -day routines, we have to remember as special needs parents that we have to learn to decompress and uh, decompress and relieve some of that stress too, as would any other normal parent would with a special with a non-special needs child. We have to learn to be able to reach out and ask for help when those stressors come along. Um, so let's identify some of the stressors that we have out there um, when dealing with special needs child. I'm going to be, like I said, speaking today mostly from my perspective and my point of view. Um, so if there are anything that you deal with on a daily need that I don't cover, please be sure to comment down into uh, the comment box so that I can bring that up and maybe other people can hear some today stressors that I deal with with um, you know, Mateo on a daily basis, um, dealing with my special needs son is, you know, making sure that I'm doing everything on time. Uh, that is very important for us. And then being consistent daily, um, because with Mateo being slow cognitively, um, uh, one thing that he can count on daily is making sure that we follow a routine. The more we follow that same routine, when we do our stretches, when we do, um, our um, cognitive learning time, when we do our, you know, just communication or times when he's, you know, spending time with himself watching cartoons, it's very important that we do those on time every day so he can kind of know that I can expect this, um, you know, and, but those become stressors too for me and regards to like, you know, I can't be late for this, I got this. So, you know, some of the things that I do to help with that are, um, you know, building a calendar uh, that goes over everything that um, we do and then getting those notifications in on my phone so I never miss out on those things. Um, you know, and then I have my routines that I have with my daughter too as well. 
you know, making sure that we have breakfast uh, every morning at the same exact time. So therefore she doesn't get me out of sync and routine with my son. Um, you know, so I try and link up the times that when she eats the same time he eats. So I don't have that extra added stressor of, um, you know, st you know, starting Mateo's feed and then 30 minutes later doing another feed with my daughter or feeding my daughter or getting everything, you know, while it's supposed to be technically the same time I'm supposed to be doing his physical therapy needs. So these are some of the things that I do um, to try and manage some of those stressors. Uh, and I try and relate that a lot to um, my other friends who have kids as well. Um, so therefore they can kind of understand that parenting a child with special needs, yes, it's different. Yes, at times it can be difficult, but you know, we, we're, we're parents at the end of the day and we have some of those uh, same stresses, you know, and being a special needs parent, um, I feel like we find it hard to communicate with other parents um, by the sense of relating. We are always trying to find ways to connect with others that understand, or if not finding ways to connect with others, feeling like we're alone in this. Um, there are a lot of resources out there. There are a lot of Facebook groups. Um, you know, and that's one of the reasons why I'm so happy to actually be a part of Alabama Care and be along with a lot of the Facebook groups that I'm in because there are other people that can relate, that can understand. Um, and I feel like it's important for us as parents admit for, to be in managing our stress to be able to talk with others that understand or that can relate. Each one of our tiny superheroes with special needs um, have their own disabilities or have their own strengths and has their have their own weakness so you know there will be times where you find yourself feeling somewhat alone but the biggest thing is finding not focusing on those ways that you are alone but finding ways to connect with others um on a different level um the need for the human need in general for being able to communicate and you know to de-stress is to find ways to relate and where there's plenty of other different ways that we can relate um you know and instead of trying to shy away um which was one of the biggest things that i did in the beginning with with having mateo was not necessarily shying away it's just not communicating to others about you know what we go through on a day-to-day -day basis um or feeling that people just won't understand what you know, we do as special needs parents. Um, but, you know, I'm here to say that we don't need to shy away. Actually, we need to do the opposite. We need to walk forward with others, even with parents that don't have special needs and teach them. You know, I come across many of stories uh, on Facebook or, in, per or in, in person where people are like, we'll make statements in regards to, you know, saying, what's wrong with your child. One of the biggest things I see a lot of parents, um, you know, give backlash for, and it's our job as parents of special needs to teach these individuals instead of getting mad at these individuals. Um, because getting mad at these individuals for not understanding or not knowing how to phrase certain things adds more stress to ourselves. You know, we build ourselves up to get angry at that moment for saying, for a statement that somebody else doesn't understand is actually wrong, you know? So it's our job to not shy away from those things, but to educate them, you know? And there are ways of doing it without being hostile or without sounding defensive. Um, this is the way that we connect with others, parents who don't understand. This is the way that we are able to relate. This is the way that um, we're able to compare and contrast our um, differences with each other while also providing education. Um, and it's also a way of being able to recognize the different signs, recognize the signs that cause stress. Um, I've had others walk up to me in Target before or Walmart before with extreme curiosity um, in regards to, you know, what Mateo's disability is, um, but they don't know how to 
asked the proper way. Um, uh, so it, sometimes it comes out to us as parents with special needs that, you know, that was wrong. That was rude. Um, but I could tell it wasn't their intent. You know, they didn't walk up to some stranger out in the public just to piss them off or just to make your day go bad, um, go um, be bad, so to speak. It was their way of trying to understand, um, you know, but I sense that, you know, when I go out in public with Mateo um, and to grocery stores or to wherever maybe, and somebody would come, I sense that stress coming on when people ask that question, you know, and it's being able to recognize and identify that stress. What does it feel like? Do you feel like your heart is racing? Do you feel like um, you're, you're just seeing red? Um, and being able to take a step back, take a deep breath, um, even in that moment, because understand those people who do ask you that question will already know that they're approaching in a sense that they don't want to typically offend you. Um, now, not saying everybody who does ask that question doesn't want to offend. There are other people who want to know, like, or who other people out there who assume that it was your fault or something that you did. Um, but it is our, like I said, it's our job to educate them. And so by recognizing those early signs of stress triggers allows you to better manage that. So what I would say to somebody who came up to me in regards to Mateo and saying, you know, what's wrong with your son? I would tell them, um, you know, nothing's wrong with my son, but he does have special needs. Correct them, educate them, because the moment that I can correct them, educate them, and then also start explaining to them my son's disabilities and some of the challenges that it has, the minute that I start realizing that that stress starts ebbing away, me being able to open up to somebody to educate them keeps me from stressing as much because I have a response. I have something that I can educate these people on. If I get mad in the sense of being able to, uh, of getting at them, then not only in that moment am I going to feel more stress, but walking away from that situation is going to be stress, is stressful. Um, hey, Sharon, thank you so much for popping into the chat. Um, you know, we need to be able to discuss with others as well. What does the stress looks like? Uh, you know, your significant others, your family, your friends. Because um, sometimes there are moments where you feel like you can't take that step back. You can't take that deep breath. You can't count to 10 or whatever. So maybe the case. And if there's somebody there, your significant other, your um, your children, your family member, your caregivers, your respite workers, you know, let them know what some of your stressors are or what some of your, your stress looks like. So therefore they can help you, they can aid you. That's one of the great things um, I would say about having uh, the nurse that I have with Mateo because she can sense because she knows that I'm, uh, I, I suffer from anxiety, that I suffer from depression and she'll come up to me and offer different ways that she can help, you know, like, Hey, let me help you with this. Uh, use an example. Actually, yesterday we were uh, at a doctor's appointment. We had a doctor's appointment at 11 o'clock. We didn't get home until four o'clock from one doctor's appointment. Um, so a five hour trip. And in regards to moving back and forth from the waiting room, um, to get our vitals, to go back to the actual back room. I was getting a little bit nervous because we carry a lot of stuff. We've got his suction machine. We've got his feeding pump. We've got his emergency, uh, his, his diaper bag, we've got his wheelchair, we've got his vent, um, you know, and of course, Mateo himself, and then getting him in and out to do the vitals in regards to weighing him um, and just doing all those other things. I get overwhelmed and I try and do everything by myself. I'm a big prideful person that I'm trying to work on uh, in regards to just understanding that I need help sometimes. Um, and so back to the story, you know, I went to go pick up everything uh, and start pushing Mateo. And as I started pushing, she just instantly grabbed the suction bag and says, give me that, you're doing too much, you know, calm down, you know? And, and I needed that healthy reminder. I needed to know that I had somebody that was, that was there. So letting other people know what those stressors look like, letting them know what your triggers are, um, can help you better manage your stress too as well. And it's not to say that accepting uh, stress is not normal. You just don't have to be toxic about it. 
Um, you know, and the less toxic you are about stressful situations, the easier it is to manage, the easier it is, the better for you. One of the recent resources that I've started doing, um, and, and this is actually something big I really want everybody to be aware of, uh, is that um, being a parent of a special needs child um, at Children's of Alabama specifically, um, they actually offer counseling services there for free. Um, I just recently started doing my, this myself within the past month, month and a half. Um, did not request, they didn't require insurance information from me. Um, you know, they're not utilizing my son's insurance, but now I get a one hour session, um, at the choice of once a week or once every other week, depending on, you know, how life things are going with my life. There are plenty of other resources that you can go to people that you can vent to without worrying about whether or not, um, they're going to go back and say anything to anybody else. Um, you know, so you need to be able to offload that stress, be able to get that toxic stress out of your life and understand that basic stress exists in all of our lives children with spare children with special needs and children without special needs as well um you know we have to learn to be able to make that time to decompress to de-stress and having a counselor is one of the greatest resources i feel like can help because these individuals they went to school they're licensed clinical workers or counsel worker to be able to help you Identify your own stress markers if you don't know what they are. Identify what your own stress triggers are if you're not able to differentiate what it is. Um, you know, and being able to manage that stress makes better time for you and your kids, even with children without special needs. It is very important that you take care of yourself as a parent in order to provide a better living for your children. Um, every day is not going to be easy. Every day is, um, you know, you have to look at it. It's going to be a new day. It's going to be a new challenge. So expect, so understanding that every day is a new challenge, um, and knowing that and going in the next day, knowing that every day is going to have its own stress, uh, being better prepared for it is the best way that you can help your children grow. Um, reminding to set time to care for yourself, even if it's putting it into your Google calendar or your Apple calendar that reminds you, hey, between one o'clock and two o'clock is my time. I'm going to sit back and read a book or play guitar or, you know, take this time to email my counselor and let them know this has, you know, been bothering me for the past couple of days. And I know my session's not until next week. Um, you know, I just need to be able to offload this information to somebody so I don't, you know, continue dwelling in my own stress. Self-care is very important. Thank you, Jasmine, for chiming in and saying that self-care is the most important care that you can do um, for yourself, because if you're not happy, if you don't take care of yourself, your children, um, especially a lot of our special needs children who aren't able to care for themselves, aren't going to be able to do it themselves. Um, finding new hobbies or restarting old hobbies from, you know, that help promote good mental health are great things. Um, I will say that, you know, as when Mateo was born, I gave up a lot of my own personal hobbies that were actually a good mental de-stress that I'm finding myself getting back into now because, um, you know, I, I told you guys when we first started this, I'm a gamer, uh, but gaming in itself can be stressful as well, especially when you play competitive games as much as I do. So recently I got myself a guitar um, to be able to not only de-stress myself that way, but it also provides me with a tool to be able to educate my children. Um, my first day that I got my guitar, um, you know, I let Mateo play with it and, you know, I put the guitar pick in his hand and let him strum the guitar and let him feel the vibrations of the string, let him hear and sense that music. And I cannot tell you, I, I have not seen him more related than, you know, the days that his teachers come and play games with him too as well. It's, it was awesome. It, it, it made me feel better that I made that decision, that I made that choice to do that. Uh, my daughter, Marcy, every single time she comes into my room now, the first thing she wants to do is go over to the guitar and start plucking the strings. That in itself, if I've had a stressful day, seeing my children light up makes my world. It makes any stress that I may have been having at that previous moment go away. So that's why I say finding new hobbies or restarting old hobbies are great things to help you de-stress and kind of level yourself out to better care for your kids. Uh, Sharon says, 
I tell parents to find your personal outlet and plug in. That is a great way of actually putting it. Um, yeah. Um, also, another thing that I've got to start uh, my hobbies is I've, I got a, a cricket machine to be able to start creating crafts and creating decals uh, or whatever. So maybe the case you can find something there's got to be you know taking a walk um and if you've got your children with you and they're unable you know, without any help you know even walking around the house or putting on soundscapes in the background background so you feel like you're outside walking you know maybe even put a fan up so you feel like you've got a breeze if you can't leave your children unattended there are plenty of other ways to be able to manage and de-stress and um, finding one i feel like is the most important and best way to take care of yourself and your children. Uh, and one of the last things I want to kind of go over is asking for help. Learning to ask for help has been my biggest issue. Uh, oh, uh, Alabama Care asked what kind of guitar. I actually got a Schecter uh, hollow body acoustic guitar. Uh, it's one of my first acoustic guitars that I have bought. And I, I bought just for the simple fact that I wanted to be able to have something to play. Um, I want something I want to have play like without having an amp. But if I ever find myself, you know, a few months, a couple years down the road, getting good at it and that I wanted to actually perform with others or do some kind of live production or something, I have that ability to be able to add some, some, some uh, pedals and some effects into it. So yeah, I'm, I was ex really excited about that, uh, that purchase. Uh, but, uh, you know, asking for help, asking for help is definitely key um something that i've learned to do especially in the past year after i got full custody of mateo um, is that asking for help is way more beneficial and way less stressful than it is trying to do it alone um do i do it all the time no i grew up being a prideful person i grew up being a person learning to take care of myself and only depending on myself growing up but every single time i find myself reaching out and asking for help um that initial moment of asking for help is more stressful than I personally can imagine. But the minute I get a response back, whether it be a yes or whether it be a no, that stressful moment ends up being over. Rather than sitting there, you know, stressing, carrying all the equipment by myself, doing all of this by myself, and stressing that whole entire way of moving things around, asking for that little bit of help is a second of is a is a second of stress. But then the minute they help, I'm like, dang, this is so much more easier. Um, utilizing your resources consistently. Like I said, uh, reaching out to your local hospital, your local children's hospital, if you're dealing with children with special needs and asking them for counseling resources. Um, you know, you would not believe how many people out there are actually willing to help or at least point you into the right direction. Um, you know, if you've if your family is available, uh, reaching out to those family members and just saying, "Hey, um, I need a break, or I need your assistance with something." You know, uh, um, you know, even if it's only for thirty minutes or an hour, can I borrow some of your time because you know I'm at my wits end, or I'm losing track of myself, or you know I feel like I'm not taking proper care of uh, my child, or I can do better for my children. Um, utilizing your family as resources. And then also letting others know when you're not well, um, letting others others know when you're not in a great mental health. Um, a lot of people believe that this shows signs of weakness, but signs of weakness are also signs of strength. That means you recognize that you're not able to do this by yourself. You recognize that it takes a team, it takes a family of individuals, whether they be by blood or not, to take care of these children with special needs, um, you're never you, at the at your lowest point in time where you feel the most alone. Know that you don't have to. Uh, I've even have some of Mateo's doctors um, who have reached out when they've sensed the stress, or will just call and check in, and just say, "Hey, 
Um, I know we um, hadn't talked in a while, um, specifically actually his neurologist and his uh, nurse practitioner Paul, sometimes will call him to say, hey, no, I haven't talked in a while, haven't heard anything. How's Mateo doing? This actually just happened last week in regards to Mateo's seizures uh, increase. And I don't know if any of you kid, uh, any of your kiddos or any, anybody out there who has epilepsy, but I feel like February was a crazy month for all of us. We have had more seizures this month um than we've had recently but that's also because you know we had many snowstorm the same day that we had tornado warnings you know we've had thunderstorms and highs of 71s and highs of 43 all a matter of two days apart from each other you know so needless to say this month has been stressful and so i called his neurologist and asked the um you know to let them know that hey mateo has been having some frequent seizures and they had an on-call nurse call back um, and, you know, kind of like reassure us and then let us know about our doctor's appointment. But nurse practitioner Polly um, called like a few hours after that without necessarily having a need to just because she saw the notes in the computer. So when you're feeling that you're alone, always know that there are others that, can that, that you can reach out to. Um, Sharon Glenn Henderson said, it's humbling to ask for help. It is, it is very humbling asking for help. It, it's, it also shows strength. Like I said, if you are the kind of person who feel like I can do everything by myself, I don't need help. Yeah, you're strong-willed. Yes, you have strength that some others can't. That person who recognizes their limit, their pushing point, has the same amount of strength as a person who does not ask for help. Asking for help is not a weakness, and it's not something that's going to come overnight. It's not something that's going to, you know, you'll master this by the end of the week. I know adults in their 50s, 60s, 70s who still will refrain from asking for help um, in general, but it does so a sign of strength in regards to knowing that you need help and there are others out there willing to help you and managing your stress it, even if it's on your own personal stress doesn't have to be alone um so at the end of this video actually i'm going to comment in the comment section letting others know there's a website that i kind of piggyback off of to get resources but you also have other resources out there um like us alabama care you have um m many support groups there's um there's an alabama support group for children with special needs um, that I will link down there and, and at the end of this video, there are uh, um, different agencies that you can go to um, that will, if not provide you the help, point you in the right direction to get help. Uh, so, you know, I just wanted to really touch on this topic because it's been touched, it, you know, I've been really stressed not only with Mateo's, you know, increase in seizures personally, but I feel like opening up to y'all and letting y'all know that it, it has been a stressful month. It has been, you know, some stressful few years. I have found other ways and other outlets to be able to, to, to learn to manage that. Um, you know, if you're doing this as a single parent, understand I'm here with you and I completely understand how difficult it is. If you're doing it with a significant other, um, you know, I understand that too as well because when Mateo's mom and I were together and we, you know living together, working with us together, it's almost even more stressful having a significant other because then you have their stressors affecting your stressors and you can only manage and worry about yourself sometimes. Um, but getting help, asking for help, making time to decompress, recognizing those signs to manage to stress and finding ways to relate with others with special needs or without special needs are, in my opinion, some of the greatest ways to manage that. Um, finding ways to relate with that, you know, everybody's, we're all human, we have a need to relate. Finding ways to relate is, is kind of like the first way, the first step I recommend to people. Find, because that's kind of like the first step of asking for help without asking for help relating to others who understand or don't understand. Um, and then, you know, once you get that comfortability, recognizing those signs to manage the stress. Um, and then once you've acknowledged those, making time to decompress and de-stress. And then if all else fails, 
Um, if you're a private person and don't, then you end with, all right, you know, I've, I've found, I've tried to find ways to relate. I've tried to find those who can understand. I, you know, tried teaching versus shying away. Uh, I've tried recognizing early signs, but I just can't do it alone. Utilize resources and ask for help. Um, so today is going to be a little bit of a shorter broadcast because I wanted to get straight to the point, let you guys know that they're, you know, that I'm here, uh, others are here, uh, reach out for help, decompress, manage stress and relate with others. Um, and just don't shy away. Um, and at the end of this video, I'll be posting links in the comment section of Facebook's on the, on the Facebook group. And also when we upload this to YouTube. So I want to say thank you everybody for tuning in today listening to these topics. Um, if you've learned something today, please be sure to comment in there and share with others some of the other practices that you use and some of the other resources you use. Because at the end of the day, we are all in this together, managing our stress, and it doesn't have to be alone. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Greatly appreciate it. And you guys have a blessed day.